An old story tells of two men climbing a mountain. One of them promises the other, who is feeling down and depressed, that it will be worth the effort. Looking forward to the amazing destination, the latter climbs with his friend as they talk and spend time together. When they reach the top, the second man looks around wondering what all the fuss was about. The view is great, but nothing spectacular is awaiting at the pinnacle. His friend then explains to him that the journey was not about the destination, but about the climb, their time together, their bonding, their talking and his healing. The famous quote, life is about a journey, not a destination, has been attributed to a number of authors, but the seeds of this proverb lie deep within the scriptures. What is the metaphor of the garden? The garden is one of the most amazing and beautiful metaphors in scripture. It is a fundamental metaphor of the covenant of the people of God with Yahweh. Eden is our origin story, not just because of our creation, but our creation in relationship with God. The scriptures are all about relationships, those we must guard and nourish, and those we must create and cultivate. The garden is the metaphor for our relationship with God. And we are called both to till it and keep it and to bear fruit and multiply it throughout the cultures and generations. This is both a sacred and practical imperative because not only is our relationship with God the source of our life, but practically speaking, unless we nurture our relationship with God and then seed the covenant forward generation after generation among everyone we can, God will no longer have a people. The growth of God's garden kingdom depends upon our acts of tending and seeding. In our context, we might call that ministry and mission or more explicitly, discipleship and evangelization. What then is the metaphor of the sower and the seed? In the story of Babel, God again takes on the metaphor of sower and we a metaphor of seed. God breaks down our walls, gathers us up and sows us back into the world, distributing us everywhere to again put down roots and restore our jobs of covenant keepers, fruit bearers and seeders. For we only take this role seriously when we are dependent upon the sovereignty of God. And because without us fulfilling this role, God will no longer have a people. Our job is not to reach a destination in which we have reached our independent goals. Our job as God's people is to be in a perpetual and lifelong process of nurturing, keeping, seeding and sowing the covenant of God even as God continues to nurture and grow us as people. The purpose is in the process, not in the destination. In the gospel of today, Jesus re-explains what it means to be in covenant with God, to be a worker in God's vineyard, to be part of God's kingdom. Jesus gives us two clues. The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seeds on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. That is what is called the organic gospel. I like to call this the organic gospel, for we have a simple job. We are both seeds and sowers, 
we plant ourselves in God's care, seed our faith deeply in Jesus, and we live our lives growing into that relationship. We till and keep the kingdom of God within us, a relationship with God that nourishes us. We mature in our discipleship and grow in our faith and then we organically and naturally bear the fruit of that relationship in our lives. After that, we serve as sowers ourselves, sowing the seed of the gospel and planting them into hearts and minds of people everywhere so that future generations and peoples will also know the glory and wonder of God in Jesus. This is how the kingdom grows and it goes against everything we as people like to do as part of our agendas, strategies and visions. Jesus knew and we know too that at heart we are a Babel kind of people. We love the destination, we worship the destination and we want to spend all our time scheming on how to get there. But in doing so, we ignore the most important lesson that everything in life and in our relationship with God is about the walk, not about the destination. Even in our faith, we too often set our sights upon heaven and what will happen after death. But in doing so, we can forget that the most important job we have is what we do on the way, in our lives, in our ministry and mission, in our relationship with God, in our proclamation of the gospel to others, to whom we can give the gift of life, nourishment, salvation and hope. In the organic gospel, discipleship is not about results, it is about the walk. In both of Jesus' parables today, Jesus emphasizes that the kingdom of God, meaning those who worship God and follow Jesus living in community together, grows by the consistent nurturing, scattering and seeding of the gospel. But how it grows, how fast, how much, where and when is not for us to know or worry about. It just happens. When we remain in process of both nourishing our own relationship with God and seeding that love of God in others, it simply grows without us ever having to think about it. Even what we believe to be the smallest of efforts or the smallest acts of faith and evangelization may be planting unknown roots into new places, new hearts and minds. It is not for us to measure by our measuring sticks of success. It is for us to strategize and make into goals for getting people into our buildings and pews. It is not for us to meter out or to make our own as though a deed or accomplishment will make us better or achieve a desired result. Our discipleship is not about results. Of that, Jesus is clear. The joy is not in the destination. The joy comes through the walk. Throughout the scriptures, we learn that to live a life of faith, commitment to God is to walk with God through God's garden life. To walk with God means to live closely in tune with God, to be in step with God. To walk with God is the ultimate complement as one living a life in faith and love. In the organic gospel, our call is to be nurturers and fruit bearers. Notice that the scriptures don't tell us to worry about the efficacy of our work. Paul only speaks about spreading the good news and loving each other. The growth of the kingdom happens organically when disciples and apostles take their roles as nurturers, fruit bearers, spreaders and seeders seriously. And it is not for us to worry about, fret about, strategize about or attain through our various own means. But God is a God of resurrections. And God raises up churches who are taking their role as fruit bearers and seeders to heart. Pure and organic faith, 
unsoiled by pesticides unnatural growth techniques artificial hormones alien strategies will grow the most mature ripe and beautiful fruit filled with seeds ready to take root all we need to do is plant them into the hearts and minds of others and leave the rest up to jesus simple faith simple life simple mission life giving organic love that's god's dream for us let's make it our dream too praise be jesus christ